Hi, I'm Peter Milios from the Finance News Network, and today we're talking with Alderun Resources. Alderun is trading under the ASX code AL8 and has a market capitalization of approximately $4.4 million. Alderun Resources specializes in critical and precious metal exploration. Today, we're pleased to have with us Alderun's Managing Director, Mr. Scott Caithness. Scott, welcome to the network. Thanks very much, Peter. It's great to be here. Now, first, let's kick off by painting some color on the overall operations of Alderun Resources. Look, Alderon's a, a mineral exploration company. Uh, our assets are uh, in the US and also in Brazil. So our prime project that we're exploring at the moment is the Frisco Copper Gold Project in Utah in the US. We've also got a couple of other gold targets there. And uh, we're also actively exploring ball lithium in Brazil. We've got, uh, we've got eight separate projects in Brazil that we're exploring for lithium. Now, you've had a busy month making several big announcements. Could you please outline these announcements at your projects over the course of the month, notably the most recent one, the approval to commence drilling at the New Year's Copper Gold Prospect in Utah? Yeah, look, we're very excited about about uh, the New Year's Prospect in uh, in Utah. Um, that's part of our Frisco project area. Frisco is basically, it's an old uh, copper gold mining district. Uh, copper and gold mining ceased in the area in about 1920. So it really hasn't had a lot of uh, a lot of work done on it since then. We basically, over the, la- over the course of the last uh, few months, we've uh, We've gone back to the to the areas that were explored, primarily around the cactus district. Um, we've remodeled the old cactus deposit, um, which historically produced about 1.3 million tonnes at about 2% copper with about a 0.3 gram per tonne gold credit. What we found from that modelling is that uh, is that there's probably a lot more mineralisation left behind than, than what was there because there's been quite a number of holes drilled probably over the last 30 to 40 years. Uh, at Cactus with some really good intersections, you know, intersections of five, six metres, anything up to close to six to seven percent, um, intersections of uh, of 12 metres, grading about three percent, generally within broader zones uh, that will grade one, 1.5 percent copper. Um, often often the, the drill holes were, were historical, so in many cases there wasn't gold assay, but where there is gold assay, generally a gold credit of around about 0.3 uh, grams per tonne gold. So so quite an exciting prospect in itself. So that modelling actually identified that cactus is still open at depth. It's still open along strike. But the most interesting thing that came out of that modelling is that um, there is a prospect called New Year's, which is about four or 500 metres along a structural trend uh, that goes through cactus. Um, and what we found from that was there's some old drill holes at New Year's that were drilled back in the 1960, 40 metres at 2.3% uh, copper. Uh, there's other intersections of, of around about 11 metres at about 1.5, 1.6, again, within broader zones that will grade anywhere between 0.8 copper and about 1.6, 1.7 copper. So, but New Year's hasn't been drilled since the 1960s. Um, so we're very excited. We've done this this modelling work uh, in terms of the mineralisation. We've also looked at the geophysics for the area, um, the magnetics. And so what we did was, what we did, we got the magnetics, which was magnetics flown by Rio Tinto. So Rio Tinto had explored the area in a joint venture with us, uh, an earning agreement uh, for large scale Rio Tinto scale porphyries, you know, a billion tonnes of 1% copper type stuff. We're going back and we're looking at the smaller, higher grade opportunities that exist there that aren't Rio Tinto targets. So, but as part of their exploration, Rio Tinto flew a very high quality magnetic survey uh, over the area. And we went back and we remodeled that magnetics uh, and, and reprocessed it from the point of view of smaller, higher grade targets. And what we found is that Cactus has a very discrete magnetic anomaly that sits within a corridor of magnetic low. Um, there is a little deposit next door to Cactus which was basically gold rich grading greater than a gram per tonne gold in its historical production with a copper credit. When we go up to New Year's, New Year's has a larger discrete magnetic anomaly and it's sitting in the same corridor and it's only 400 metres away. It's got high grade copper intersections. um, And again, it hasn't been explored since the 1960s. So um, what we've done recently is we've gone back and we've done soil sampling over it. 
over the New Year's to see if soil sampling works because the magnetics not only picked up the New Year's target, it picked up about another 12 targets that looked like cactus and comet. And so we wanted to know whether, first of all, soils would work in terms of prioritising these other targets and also obviously whether it picks up the New Year's New Year's uh, mineralization. So what we found with that is we got grades up to 0.3 plus another three anomalies uh, yeah. areas. So um, we're very excited about it. We've we've put in the permit for drilling. We've got a two-stage drilling program. Initially, we're going to be doing three holes, which has been what's been approved by the government. And then once we've drilled those three holes, assuming we get good results, then basically we'll do stage two drilling, which is more step out and extension work. So that's, that's primarily what we're doing at Frisco. Um, in Brazil, uh, we've we're basically still getting results back from the initial round of stream sediment sampling that we did um, over the project areas. So that work to date has picked up um, in three areas. It's picked up lithium uh, anomalies, and also it's picked up um, in two or two of the areas um, actually rare earth anomalies as well to to be followed up. So that's part of our plan in the second half of the year as well. And Scott, last question from me. You touched on this already, but could you go in a bit more detail about what the next six to 12 months will look like for the company? Yeah, look, obviously the um, the critical thing for us is we, we want to drill a Frisco project. Um, we've got to get that drilling underway. Um, we're optimistic about the results. I mean, it's an old copper and gold mining district. Um, you know, we, we're in the right place structural corridor we've got good anomalies we've got old drill holes that have been been drilled in the past so we're quite optimistic about it and we've got we've got a lot of targets um, to test that are, are the right style of mineralization so so obviously if if our first round of drilling there is successful we'll want to keep drilling um, so so critically it'll be and that'll, that'll be happening in the second half of this year we, we expect that the drilling will will actually get underway um, next month in August. Um, obviously, in terms of the lithium in Brazil, um, we've got follow-up work to do on those projects that we've just done the stream work on, uh, picking up the anomalies. We also picked up um, a couple of months ago uh, another project in Brazil, which is a little bit more advanced, again, lithium, called the Solitary Project. Um, the Solitary Project is a very, from my perspective, a very simple project to explore. It's it's basically, it's got a, a defined already a four and a half kilometre long lithium in soil anomalies. Um, it's got a gap in the drilling then for about four kilometres, and then it's got another anomaly, a small anomaly at the at the end of that gap. So potentially it's a nine kilometre long um, lithium in soil anomaly. Um, very simple in terms of the work to be done there. We can either drill some traverse lines of uh, drill holes across the anomaly to just see whether there's any um, pegmatites, lithium bearing pegmatites there. Um, and also we can fill in the soil geochem uh, as well in the gap period. So. It's a fairly straightforward program on that one, which we want to get underway in the second half of the year as well. So we've got a lot of work to be done in the second half of this year and, and we'll have good news flow going through that period. Perfect. Sounds exciting times ahead. Uh, thank you, Scott, for your time. Thanks very much, Peter.